Is he an oppressive band dictator, a perpetual whiner, or a shameless copycat? From bitter lawsuits with his ex-bandmates in Slipknot to brawling with fans, here's why these rockers can't stand Corey Taylor. In March of 2019, Slipknot percussionist Chris Fain filed a lawsuit against the band, citing withheld payments. Fain specifically accused Corey Taylor and Sean Clown Cran of setting up several band-related business entities that collect money from the band. The suit called for full forensic accounting to be done on all of the band's companies and assets in order to collect any profits and damages that Chris may have been owed. Taylor was infuriated, taking to social media with an all-caps tweet saying, just wait till the truth comes out. Long live the knot. A few days later, Fane was fired from Slipknot in a statement that read, We are disappointed that he chose to point fingers and manufacture claims, rather than doing what was necessary to continue to be a part of Slipknot. The lawsuit revealed that, despite Slipknot consistently referring to themselves as a brotherhood, Chris Fane was never legally considered a member of the band. Rather, an independent contractor who performed with Slipknot and received a fee for doing so. The band's manager, Rob Shore, would say in no uncertain terms that Chris was never considered a shit shareholder, owner, or member of any business entity associated with Slipknot. A later filing would reveal the shocking fact that all of Slipknot's members are considered employees of Corey and Clown. In November of 2020, Fane's case was voluntarily discontinued with prejudice, as Fane likely reached a settlement agreement with his former employers. In the band's early years, Slipknot was often compared to American heavy metal band Guar due to their grotesque costumes and elaborate live performances. Slipknot's Corey Taylor took offense to these comparisons, as he felt that his band commanded more respect than the satirical comedy stylings of Guar. In 2003, Corey would publicly declare that he considered Guar to be past their prime and had outstayed their welcome. Guar's frontman, Odorous Arungus, who according to the character's backstory is 50 billion years older than Taylor, would issue a statement of his own, denouncing Taylor in a whopping four paragraphs that mocked the Slipknot frontman for being sulky, whiny, and immature. It delights me to no end that you think Guar sucks, quipped Odorous. Maybe you can whine about it some more and we can get some free publicity. A ninny placed on a podium is a ninny nonetheless. Dave Brocky, who portrayed the character of Odorous Arungus, tragically passed away of an overdose in 2014. In 1998, Slipknot signed a $500,000 seven-album deal with Roadrunner Records. Within a year, Canadian rock band Nickelback was also signed to Roadrunner. This upset Corey Taylor, who felt that the label's public relations team was giving Nickelback priority over his band. That's a very bitter subject for me, said Taylor. I'm glad they could use our money to make Nickelback happy. His words would spark a bitter behind-the-scenes feud between the two bands, a feud that Nickelback vocalist Chad Kruger reignited in 2017 when he accused Taylor's band Stone Sour of shamelessly imitating Nickelback. An irate Taylor would respond by mocking Kruger, pointing out the fact that he had previously been voted the ugliest dude in rock and calling Nickelback the quote, KFC of rock music. The feud would even inspire Stone Sour fans to erupt into chants of F Nickelback at their live performances. Corey Taylor would later reveal that Kruger's bandmates threw him under the bus and called Taylor to apologize for their bandmates' comments, saying, that just tells you the level of ego you're dealing with. His band called and apologized. They were like, it's not us, we promise. Thomas. Taylor then referred to Kruger as, quote, Captain Ego from Planet Douche. The ever-polarizing Limp Bizkit frontman Fred Durst would rile up Slipknot fans when he allegedly referred to them as, quote, a bunch of fat, ugly kids in 1999. Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor eventually caught wind of Durst's disrespectful comments, which greatly enraged the singer. During a live promotional appearance on Australian television, a fan asked Slipknot if there was a rivalry between them and Limp Bizkit. Taylor would quickly speak up, saying he couldn't believe Durst's audacity. He would also point out that Slipknot and Limp Bizkit, who were both a part of the new metal subgenre, were very likely to share fan bases. This meant that, by calling Slipknot fans fat ugly kids, Durst was calling his own fans fat ugly kids. Corey then made threats to Fred's life on live television. In a 2011 interview, Corey would reveal that Fred Durst's children were actually huge fans of Slipknot and asked him for a photo. Legendary American record producer Rick Rubin worked on Slipknot's third album, Volume 3 The Subliminal Verses, in 2003. Slipknot vocalist Corey Taylor has been consistently vocal about his distaste for Rubin and his work ethic in the studio. Taylor revealed that, despite being charged a horrendous sum of money for his services, Rubin hardly ever showed up to the studio throughout the entire recording process. Furthermore, when Rubin actually showed up to work, 
He would sluggishly lay on a couch wearing sunglasses and barking orders into a microphone before leaving after an all too brief 45 minute session. The Rick Rubin of today is a shadow of the Rick Rubin that he was, said Taylor. He is overrated, overpaid, and I will never work with him again. In 1996, Jim Root joined Corey Taylor's rock band Stone Sour. When Slipknot recruited Root in 1999, he was now faced with the difficult task of juggling his duties between the two bands. Just before embarking on their winter 2013 tour, Stone Sour announced that Jim Root would be sitting out the trek in order to work on Slipknot's upcoming album, Point Five The Grey Chapter. However, unbeknownst to fans, Root had already been unceremoniously fired from the band via telephone. Jim was never given a reason as to why he was dismissed, though he would later reveal that he believes bitterness towards his commitments to Slipknot led to the acrimonious split, saying, When people conspire and turn their back on you because you have bigger obligations to get to, it's a little bit like, well, I guess that's that. Jim Root did not speak kindly of the band after he was fired, calling them a quote, sinking ship that was only concerned with money. The situation put a strain on Root and Taylor's relationship, as the two still had to work together in Slipknot. Eventually, frustrations would boil over in an explosive confrontation between the two as recounted by Corey Taylor in a 2014 interview with Metal Hammer. Root would later tell Metal Hammer that he and Taylor would have ended up killing each other had he stayed in both bands. These days, the two are on much better terms, with Corey recently revealing that the two are considering starting a new project together. Mushroomhead co-founder and lead vocalist Jeffrey Nothing would make shocking allegations against Slipknot, claiming that Slipknot was a shameless ripoff of Mushroomhead manufactured by Roadrunner Records after they failed to sign them in the late 90s. The feud between the two bands would ultimately climax when Slipknot played their first ever gig in Mushroomhead's hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. People came down and threw everything but rocks at us, remembers Corey Taylor. They hit Paul in the face with the padlock the size of my fist while we were on stage. A full-on brawl would later erupt between the members of Slipknot and Mushroomhead fans in the audience. The uproar would culminate with the police needing to break up the brawl and making several arrests. The feud would continue over the years as a one-sided affair, with Slipknot choosing to take the more diplomatic approach of ignoring the band completely, while Mushroomhead continued throwing jabs at Slipknot in their interviews. The feud came to an end in 2010, as Mushroomhead publicly sent their condolences to Slipknot after the tragic death of their bassist, Paul Gray. Corey Taylor's public showdown with Machine Gun Kelly made for one of the most explosive feuds of the last decade. It all started when MGK, who was a huge fan of Slipknot, invited Corey Taylor to lay down a verse for his upcoming album, Tickets to My Downfall. The verse MGK received was, as he put it, effing terrible. While not confirmed, the most plausible explanation is that Taylor was actively promoting his solo album, CMFT Must Be Stopped, right around the time of this doomed collaboration. He likely sent MGK a verse in that album's radio dad rock rap style rather than a heavy Slipknot-esque verse that MGK was expecting. Corey's solo album was not particularly well received by fans or critics, topping many worst of the year lists in 2020. So it's no surprise that Kells deemed the verse unusable. When MGK sent Corey feedback in an attempt to push Taylor in the right direction, Corey bowed out of the project entirely, saying he does not like it when people try to write verses for him. In February of 2021, Taylor made the feud public, not so subtly calling out Machine Gun Kelly and his pivot from rap to pop punk during an appearance on the Cutters Rockcast. I hate all new rock for the most part, Taylor said. I hate the artists who failed in one genre and decided to go to rock, and I think he knows who he is. Months later, MGK would diss Slipknot during his headlining Riot Fest performance, saying, you want to know what I'm really happy that I'm not doing? Being 50 years old wearing a weird mask on stage. The feud then went to Twitter, with the two artists publicizing the behind-the-scenes details of their failed collaborative track. The backlash against MGK was immense, with legions of Slipknot fans attacking him online and even showing up to his festival performances to relentlessly boo him. These days, MGK says that he regrets feuding with Corey, wishing the two could have handled it more maturely. I should have just picked up the phone and been like, Hey dude, why would you say that, he admits, but instead, we all acted ridiculous. Founding Korn drummer David Silveria would make headlines in the 90s when he modeled in a promotional campaign for Calvin Klein's new line of jeans. Silveria's participation in the photo shoot drew the criticism of his heavy metal colleagues, particularly Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor, who was quoted as saying, Today's underground hero is tomorrow's Calvin Klein jeans commercial. That's hard to take when you're a kid. In 2015, a fan would attempt to rekindle the feud on Twitter by claiming that he asked Silveria about Taylor's disrespectful comments. 
Apparently, Silveria claimed that he beat up Corey Taylor in a fist fight as a consequence for his words. However, Taylor would respond to the fan by simply saying that that never happened. Ironically, Slipknot's clown would model for luxury fashion house Balenciaga in 2022. Legendary Slipknot drummer and co-founder Joey Jordison would engage in a very public war of words with vocalist Corey Taylor following the tragic death of Slipknot bassist Paul Gray in 2010. The two were grieving Paul's death in very different ways, with Jordison hoping to reunite with his bandmates in the studio as quickly as possible while Taylor was unsure about Slipknot's future. Jordison and Taylor would make conflicting statements in interviews over the next few months, with Jordison ultimately declaring that Slipknot was, quote, his baby, and that, as far as he was concerned, Slipknot will continue with or without Corey Taylor. In December of 2013, Slipknot made the shocking announcement that Joey Jordison was no longer in the band, citing personal reasons as the cause. Jordison would denounce his firing, revealing that he was dismissed via email and without a face-to-face -face meeting with his bandmates. In a 2014 interview with Metal Hammer, Taylor would say that firing Jordison was one of the hardest decisions the group ever made adding that Joey was in a different place in his life than the rest of his bandmates at the time. I haven't talked to Joey in a while, revealed Taylor. It is painful. We talk about him all the time. But at the same time, do we miss him or do we miss the old him? That's really what it all comes down to. On July 26, 2021, Jordison died in his sleep of an unspecified cause at age 46. Taylor would open up about Jordison's death during a question and answer session at the Mad Monster Convention in 2022, saying, it hit me hard, even though I hadn't seen him or talked to him in a very long time. Regardless of what had gone down between us, it broke my heart. And that's our list. Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Heavy for daily videos about your favorite rock and metal bands. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching Heavy, and we'll see you soon.